Hello and welcome back to my next video on salt and pepper shakers. I'm Sylvia Snuff and today I have an interesting piece. I always have interesting pieces, at least I think they're interesting. This one is kind of a big and hefty one, kind of holds big in your hand like this. And when I first picked them up, I kind of went, whoa, like that, because I thought they were wood, but they're not. Listen to that. They are ceramic and very detailed. Look at that wood or lack of wood, it's, it, it's ceramic, like I said. So I instantly knew that these were kind of a neat piece. I knew they were vintage, I knew they were old, but even so, there's no crazing on the, um, on the, the, the paint. It's like the paint is part of the ceramic. And the, the color on this is very vibrant. Um, it's got plastic salt, vintage salt, or plastic stoppers along the bottom. It doesn't have any sticker, but um, that's where I saw the name is it's right here on the base. Twin Winton, and this is California. So this is uh, Twin, Women, Twin Winton Ceramics. And thanks to a couple of different websites, I, I gained a lot of information about this from Brian Parkinson, who is a collector, and Jerry Wettstein, who was a friend of the designer. And the designer is a Don and Ross Winton. Don is the one who did a lot of the main designs later on, but Don and Ross were uh, a couple of guys, and boys to be exact. They were 17-year-old boys that in the height of the Great Depression, 1936, to help out the family, they started designing uh, salt and pepper shakers, and they were twins. So, twin Winton. <laughs> Get that? Anyway, so <laughs> in California, they... Um, they, they just liked, Don especially loved to design, and he was always playing with clay. Uh, his mom bought him some clay, and it just kind of blossomed from there, and designed all these cute, whimsical little animals, and later cookie jars were what he was really known for. And then Don went on to um, work for, actually, Disney, but here's the interesting thing, is when they were first... Uh, designing a lot of their characters did resemble Disney characters and the attorneys of Disney said um, nah can't do that and they kind of put a stop to it and it wasn't until Walt Disney himself apparently uh, uh, you know found out about the the boys and what they were doing and that they were the sole source of income for the family and let them continue and then Don went on to actually work for Disney and did a lot of pieces for Disney apparently one of the the most famous pieces is the uh, Mickey Mouse foam uh, so if you if you think of that architect I'll put I'll overlay a, a picture of that but yes the, the Mickey Mouse phone and he also went on to design the Emmy which we still use today uh, the lady up with the big you know, globe so use that lots of other things as well so quite a span there the reason I'm not quite so sure about the date of this particular salt and pepper piece is that there was a, a line called the Hillbilly Line that they did between 1947 and 1950. Well, they kind of look a lot like they would go in with this particular set, you know, kind of the woodsy, ye old pepper bucket kind of thing. And in 1950 is when they developed this kind of iconic wood look like a carved out wood look that that's one of the things that's iconic to the twin Winton so uh, and they did that all the way up until 1978 so I'm guessing because of the hillbilly look of this particular part of the line because not all of theirs are this way that it's probably somewhere around early 1950s somewhere thereabouts as they were developing going from the hillbilly stage and then developing and, and using that in order to develop their kind of vi iconic vintage wood set so very interesting uh, story about these guys out of California. And uh, it, it just makes you stop and think about how the different stories are between all of these, how they were developed and how they were designed. And if you go on to Jerry Weinstein's uh, website, he has posted a lot of uh, drawings that Don had done as kind of like prototypes to some of the ones that, that actually did make it and some of them that didn't make it into production. So it's kind of neat if you're interested in seeing how the creative process works. So that's it for now. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell button to be notified of any more salt and pepper shaker videos I make. So bye-bye for now.